Have you ever wondered why a small nation about the size of the state of New Jersey with a population of only 7.2 million people is constantly in the headlines and constantly in the news? Why is it that a small nation that's only about 60 years old is constantly being referred to by CNN, Fox News, all the major networks, and is the center of some of the greatest conflict that's occurring on this globe right now? In 1948, one of the greatest events the world has ever seen occurred, and I'd like to speak to you about that today in our first of a number of webcasts about Bible prophecy that's being fulfilled before our very eyes. The rebirth of Israel was one of the great wonders of the world in which you and I live. Some of you watching by webcast can remember the day where at 6.10 p.m. on May 4th, 1948, the presidential press secretary for Harry Truman stood before all the world and announced the fact that Israel had been reborn as a nation. Many failed to see the significance of what occurred that day, but keen Bible scholars and students of the Word of God realized the fact that God's truths were unfolding right before their very eyes. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 32, Jesus said, Now learn a parable of the fig tree when his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves ye know that summer is nigh so likewise ye when ye shall see all these things know that it is near even at the doors he was referring in that verse of scripture to the rebirth of the nation of Israel nearly every Bible scholar would agree that that parable was dealing with the miracle that occurred that wonderful day in 1948 when God officially gave Palestine back to the people of Israel as a homeland and an official state. Understand that the very day that President Harry Truman cast the last deciding vote in the United Nations to reform Israel as a nation, that same day five Arab nations mounted up and attacked the city of Jerusalem to keep this from coming to pass. Yet they could not prevent it because God nearly 2,000 years ago had prophesied the fact that Israel would be reborn, that the fig tree would put forth her leaves again. If you study the Bible, you'll find over and over again that God made it very clear that his nation would be rebirthed. Earlier on in chapter 24 and verse number 2 of Matthew's gospel, Jesus said, See all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. He was referring to what would happen just 30 years later when Titus in 70 AD came into the city of Jerusalem and destroyed the city of Jerusalem and leveled it and literally cast the stones into the Dead Sea. And yet about 2,000 years later, God saw fit to bring that nation back into existence again. Do you know that this has never happened in the history of any nation in the history of mankind? Did you know that no other nation has ever been miraculously reborn but Israel was because God said that his nation would come back in Isaiah chapter 11 and verse number 11 God said the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people in the book of Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse number 24 God said I will take you from among the heathen and gather you of all countries and will bring you into your own land. God said he was going to bring them back. God made it clear he was going to bring them to their land again. In Ezekiel chapter 38, verse number 8, God said, In the latter years thou shalt come back into the land that is brought uh, back from the sword and is gathered out of many people, and he said, even his land of Israel. Study what the Bible taught us and study what we see in, in current events right now. And in the last 30 years, hundreds and thousands and even millions of people have been gathered literally from around the globe and brought back to the nation of Israel. This is what God said was going to happen. An interesting fact dealing with the rebirth of Israel. If you study what happened in World War I, 
There was a young man whose name was Sham Wiseman. This young chemist was an expert in all types of things, but especially in synthetic acetone. He was a young man that developed a formula so that Great Britain would no longer have to be dependent upon the Germans to import this vital ingredient in order to make smokeless powder for their guns. This young man helped Great Britain win the war. As a result, the King of England brought him into his presence, asked if he had any request, and his request was that Israel might be reborn as a nation. In 1917, the Balfour Declaration was struck, which said, quote, His Majesty's government views with favor the establishment of a national home for the Jewish people. Since that time, we have seen again the rebirth and finally that wonderful, miraculous day, May 4th, 1948, the establishment of Israel as a nation among all the nations of the world. This is so significant because Jesus said when you see that fig tree put forth his branches, you know that summer is nigh. And then he said when you see these things come to pass, know that it is near even at the doors. The very moment that Israel was reborn, I believe God's prophetic time clock began to tick again. We are ticking down not merely to the days, but I believe to the hours, to the moments, and the seconds before Christ returns. We'll be learning more about the Islamic revolution. We will learn about the wars and rumors of wars. We will learn about the incredible ecological disasters that let us know beyond any shadow of a doubt that Christ is coming back. As the clock ticks, as the moments, the seconds, and the minutes pass by, may we use every second to glorify Christ to win lost souls, and to see one last revival before he returns. Until next week, God bless you, and we'll look forward to speaking to you again.